Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and there is something creepy going on with the key lime pie in Loki season two. From close-ups of the pie slices that are way too green in this trailer footage, to this new footage from Loki's partnership with Mickey D's. I'm not complaining if I get some apple pie. Now here we are, enjoying a meal like gentlemen. You slap me in the face, I'm not gonna I got you a this. shake. Okay. Yeah, Mobius beelining for that McDonald's apple pie aligns with some disturbing things we've been noticing about the role of pie in this upcoming season of Loki. It's oddly vibrant shade of green, despite real key lime pie being more yellow in color, and some super specific rules and regulations governing the pie that we've discovered in posters for the series. I believe this key lime pie is the key! Ms. Minutes and the Kang Dynasty's new toxin to control the TVA. And if we really knew what it was made out of, your mouth wouldn't be watering so much, unless you were like Army Hammer. Now, sag has informed us that entertainment journalists like new rock stars are allowed to continue covering movies the way we do it. But we join the call to the studios and streamers to make a fair deal with the screenwriters and the professional working actors. Now, you will notice in these McDonald's promo shots that Loki greets Sylvie as she works as a McDonald's employee with a real McDonald's uniform from the 1970s. They share an odd connection, a sense of deja vu, but is Sylvie really looking at Loki here or past his shoulder at Mobius and his hunky prisoner Brad Wolf, played by the hunky Raphael Casal, who in this series will be a hunky film actor, starring in a movie called Zaniac. Now, Zaniac and Brad Wolf come from the 80s Thor comics. Zaniac is a swarm of parasitic creatures from the dark dimension who possess a host and cause them to feel overwhelming bloodlust and a desire to kill women. Yeah, it's a pretty goofy storyline from the comics, one that the MCU now seems to be paying homage to as a narrative within the narrative of the MCU. But there may be some other reason that Loki and Mobius need Brad Wolf. He could be an actor with some importance to history, or some dishonest forgery skill that Loki is now unable to do himself as famously one of the MCU characters who can shapeshift and pretend to be other characters. Or maybe 70s Sylvie just has a huge crush on this movie star. By the way, the music we're hearing in this McDonald's promo is an instrumental version of Moon River, famous from the 1961 Audrey Hepburn film Breakfast at Tiffany's, later recorded by Andy Williams, leading to one of my favorite Simpsons moments. <laughs> But really, it's Mobius's eagerness to chow down on some apple pie that I'm most curious about. Would McDonald's really agree to be featured in this if they weren't the hero of the day somehow? So why do I think Loki season two is gonna come down to pie? No, it's not just because time is circular in the series and the ratio of pie is literally the ratio of every circle's circumference to its diameter, or in the case of Loki, the full length of the circular sacred timeline divided by the longest distance a time traveler on that sacred timeline would have to travel to time slip to the furthest distance across that timeline. If I've already lost you, I'm so sorry. This is supposed to be about food. I know, I know. Okay, so the posters that are referred to concern a new setting in the TVA that we did not see in season one. It's called the Automat. And we've seen this Automat throughout the trailer for the season, but among the posters that have been released, there are three green ones. One about bringing your own mug, one about busting your own table, and one ordering no more than one slice of pie per week. And I pointed out in my deep dive of Loki season one that the TVA overall is color-coded to show the hierarchy of the organization. Orange at the bottom, level for security, green at the middle tier for the clerical level, and then gold for the top legal level. So the automat, which is colored green, is in the same part of the TVA where the archives were, where people like Mobius work, and where in season one the cafeteria was that was also colored green. But what's interesting is we never saw this automat in season one. No one talked about key lime pie. In fact, in that cafeteria in season one, the TVA employees were allowed to eat anything they wanted. Salad, juice boxes, whatever. There seemed to be a variety of food options. Now it's just pie, pie, pie. But we know that the TVA has been been warped somewhat since the season one finale. To alter those giant timekeeper statues into one giant Kang statue, in the season two trailer, there is a shot that looks like it is right after the events of season one, where the lights and the backdrop architecture of the TVA are shutting off grid by grid. We may be seeing the process of the TVA rebooting like a computer or a machine or a clock, and then turning back on with certain updates and upgrades that the employees of the TVA are programmed to accept as having always been there. I believe another customization will be this automat, with one intended purpose, to force feed TVA employees new weekly vitamins that they can't get enough of to make it so that the anomaly that occurred at the end of season one never ever happens again. A deserter, a druid, a mutant, and a talking cyborg dog are tasked with vanquishing an ancient demon, but they'll have to evade monsters, warlords, cannibals, and one angry ex-girlfriend along the way. That's the premise of a cool new graphic novel called The Codex that we are so excited to partner with on their Kickstarter campaign. The 196-page dark fantasy epic from Hayburner Studios is the first of six planned volumes.
volumes from writer Corey Crater and a team of talented artists. We've read an advanced copy of the first volume and we love the mix of sci-fi and fantasies all set in a fully realized post-apocalyptic world. It's like if George R. R. Martin wrote an X-Men comic set in the world of Mad Max. It's got some great dialogue, beautiful art, and a great lived-in relationship between its main characters. All the pages are already completed and all the artists have been paid, so the Kickstarter campaign is really a way for you, the interested graphic novel readers and the new Rockstars audience, to discover the work. So click the link in this video's description to check out the Kickstarter and support the project. Let's look more closely at these three posters. Each of them in the bottom right read, 17 minutes is sufficient, and one of them says, failure to bust your own table will result in 31 demerits. 17, 31, both of them prime numbers, and numbers that are just really, really annoying to keep track of and to quantify your routine in any repeatable way. They're designed basically to screw with you and to make your job harder. And by the way, again, in season one, we never heard of any mention of demerits, of tokens. This is stuff coming from new memos that the TVA has gotten. And yes, these posters are going to be real props that we see in the show, like this poster about the cleaning of the mugs does hang in the automat. A shot of Sylvie in the trailer shows it behind her in the background. Another shot in the trailer that I have to point out shows Loki falling past another new division of the TVA that we didn't know about before called the Timeline Preservation Administration. Last season, the TVA was depicted as a kind of enforcement agency, a legal authority, one that had a sloppy waste management process of just dumping all pruned items to the void. In my recent Miss Minutes video, I pointed to another poster and shots in the trailer that indicated the TVA is now being revealed as a kind of power plant, but rather than one that uses atomic or nuclear energy, one that uses temporal radiation emitted from a temporal core. You can read those terms on the poster for the suit that Mobius wears in the trailer as he approaches this core. The Timeline Preservation Administration might be some entity in the TVA tasked with maintaining and recycling all materials that are used in this process to reduce its temporal carbon footprint, so to speak. And this brings me back to the unsettling slice of key lime pie that is fed to the TVA employees every week in the automat. And it's bright shade of green. Food should not be this color. And I think the most famous dystopian sci-fi example here is a 1973 Charlton Heston film, Soylent Green, based on the 1966 novel Make Room, Make Room by Harry Harrison, in which future society set in the year <laughs> 2022 deals with overpopulation by feeding people a substance called Soylent Green. And I'm gonna spoil it here because it's been 50 freaking years and it's a top 100 AFI quote, Soylent Green is people. I believe that like nuclear power, pruning timelines into temporal fuel creates waste. Before, that waste could just be fed to Eliath in the void. Done and done. Flush it to nowhere. But now, with Eliath defeated and the void defunct, there must be some other waste management process. And voila! The pie, fed to the TVA workforce like clockwork. The pie could contain trace temporal fuel, memories of the screaming families and the timelines that were burned out of existence. And this would leave TVA employees doped up with the right mix of euphoria and anxiety to keep them on task and to keep them from asking the real questions. Like any pizza day at any job, the true purpose is to keep the employees from rising up and eating their bosses. And that is why I think McDonald's and their wonderful apple pies are gonna be so important because they're the one non-TVA pie that can open these people's eyes to the truth. After all, what was Kang variant he who remains eating when Loki and Sylvie met him? What fruit that is famously best for baking apple pies? A Granny Smith green apple. I rest my case. Amen. Let me know your thoughts on this horrifying theory and subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network. You can follow me on all social platforms at EAVOSS. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.